Hello, everybody. Let's build this scene of the Hawaiian Islands together. And in doing so, we're going to learn about normal maps, displacement maps, and applying color textures to geometry through the mesh standard material in React 3 Fiber. This is a great scene for accomplishing that goal because it's only one piece of geometry, just a big flat plane here that is making up both the ocean and the islands rising out of the sea. So we can just focus on building our textures and then applying them to the geometry. First thing we need to do is get some elevation data to use in order to generate our textures. These um, islands are pretty realistic. It's not completely to scale elevation wise because emphasizing the height makes them look a little cooler, but they're pretty close. And the reason that's the case is because it's based on some real world GIS mapping data. And I found these particular data sets on the University of Hawaii website. They have a type of mapping data called a DEM or digital elevation model. These are great files for building height maps to use in a 3D scene. And a height map is pretty useful anytime you're having outdoor geometry. Uh, you can use them in game engines like Unreal Engine, or you can use them in React 3 Fiber or Blender, whatever 3D application you're using. Uh, the reason that DEM files are good for height maps is that they are black and white gradients. And this image has been processed, but the raw data is a white pixel is a higher elevation and a black pixel is a lower elevation. And that's exactly what we need to drive a displacement map in React 3 Fiber. So the first step in turning these DEM files into a texture is to first, well, download them. And in this case, the actual DEM mapping data is broken up into each island in the Pacific Island chain or the Hawaiian Island chain. And so I need to download all eight of them. So I would be going through and clicking these and downloading this 10 meter DEM. 10 meter refers to the resolution of the mapping data. Essentially, there's one point for each 10 meters of terrain. There's also one meter DEM data out there, which is cool if you need really precise models. Um, but for us, 10 meters is fine. So we can download all those, and I already did that, so I'll save you the time and just go into my folder here, Hawaii GIS, where I have eight zip files. And the first thing we need to do is unzip them. So we'll just unzip them all to their own folders. And then once those are done, if we look inside of them, there's all these weird file formats. These aren't just images that we can use directly. So we're going to need to open them up in a GIS mapping software and convert them to an image that is suitable for a texture. And luckily there is a free GIS mapping program called QGIS, which is awesome. Just go to QGIS.org and download it and install it on your computer. Uh, it supports Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, BSD, and mobile devices apparently. So no matter what platform you're using, you should be able to get QGIS. And then once you've installed it, just open QGIS find your extracted data. So here's my eight folders for all the different islands. And then I can navigate into this subdirectory. And if you if you download DEM data from another source and it's you know a different place, maybe you want to build some terrain of your favorite mountain range or something, the format can be a little different. QGIS should be able to open them no matter what, but in this case, there's a hdr.adf file here. 
that I can open with um, QGIS. And it's going to ask you to select the transformation for the DEM file. You can just select the default one here. It's fine. And if everything worked, you should see uh, your first island appear. And this is great. So see here, the white portion is the highest elevation. And then it kind of descends into the sea where it's black and black is sea level. So I'm going to open all eight of these. And the cool thing is that QGIS will automatically open them as a separate layer in the same project. So if I zoom out here, you'll see now I have two islands. And I just need to repeat that process a couple more times. I have three islands, four islands, get Maui in there, five islands etc cetera, etc cetera, until we've opened all the files we need and again depending on what files you download to use you might only have to open one or maybe more um, however many you need to build up the train you want so once we have all the islands here in our scene there probably is like a way to export this as an image. Um, but to be honest, like for our use case, it's good enough just to screenshot this. And then we can clean up the image a little bit so that it'll work as a texture. So what we can do is just use the snipping tool in Windows. Or if you're on a Mac, you can use the command f5 or command 5 hotkey to screenshot it So I'm going to save this as raw elevation in a folder called Hawaii textures. And then once we've done that, this isn't quite ready to use yet because you'll notice that the ocean is all white here. So I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. So once I have it open in Photoshop, the first thing we need to do is make the ocean black. And that's actually not completely black, so I'm going to undo that. Select 0000, zero, 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 zero black. And then fill in the ocean again. And this basically means that now the whole C will be 0 elevation or sea level and then there's a couple little points in here that didn't get hit by the paint bucket so you can just go in and clean those up a little if we left these in you would just have a big pillar of land sticking out of the sea which is fine it would probably look pretty cool actually but let's clean it up here. Okay, we'll get rid of all this. Zoom back out. I think we got one more pixel to get here. And we're looking good. So this is great. Um, but there is one final step that we should do if we want to make an actual displacement map. And that is that we should resize this to be a square. Um, mainly just because our geometry is going to be a square. But also, it's best when you're making a texture like this to size the texture as some power of two. 
So that's like 2, 4, 8, 16, um, or in our case, like 10, 24, 20, 48, something like that. And the reason for that is just so that it um, scales better and it just works out a little bit more cleanly when the math is being applied to deform the vertices. So we can maybe make this image, let's say, we actually don't want to stretch it at all. So I'll just change the canvas size to, Twenty forty eight by twenty forty eight. Save that and then we can fill the new screen up with black again. And now this is looking good. This should work as a displacement texture. So we'll go and export this. And we can export it as a JPEG is fine. Either PNG or JPEG works fine here. We'll call this elevation. Great, so that is half the battle. Now that we have an elevation map, we can just use some tools to create the other two textures we need, which are a normal map and a color map. So the normal map is necessary because when the displacement map modifies the vertices on the plane, it isn't going to properly align them the way they would be aligned if you hand modeled a terrain and what that means is that the lighting is just not going to be calculated correctly unless there's an, a normal map. A normal map basically represents the direction that the faces, or technically the ver vertices on the, on the mesh are facing. Uh, luckily, there is a tool here um, that's really great, and I'll put a link to it in the video notes that can convert a height map directly into a normal map. And a normal map is not black and white, it's actually an RGB color file because RGB is three different um, channels in the image. So there's three data points that you can represent for each pixel and that's perfect for representing the orientation of the vertices because there's an X, Y, and a Z orientation for each vertice. So you can encode that as an RGB color, uh, which is pretty cool. So we will go ahead and open our elevation map and make sure it's the one that's already been processed. And then if everything worked well, you should see a color normal map right here. And we're actually gonna wanna invert this one um, just because of the way that this tool works. We wanna have the height inverted. This will actually make the lighting align correctly once we use it in our scene. So now that we've inverted the height and we have this, we can just download it back to the same directory where we have our other texture. And just to prove a point that we can load JPEGs or PNGs as textures, we'll keep this one as a PNG. We'll call it normals. All right, so now we have two out of three textures. And in this demo, you can already see how we're gonna be able to use it. It's being applied to this cube. So we're gonna use it to build our scene in a minute. And in fact, let's go ahead and start building our 3D scene using the two textures we have right now. We do need to create one more texture, but we'll do that 
at the end just to finish things up. So if you want to create a new project, you can just um, clone this React 3 Fiber starter kit that I created on Code Sandbox, and it will set up a template scene for you with a spinning cube and just comes with all the imports that we're going to use and the canvas and stuff already set up. Mostly just boilerplate code. And we are going to start off by getting rid of this cube and we can also get rid of that and we'll make a new component called terrain and that is going to return a plane geometry which we can get from the Dre library and this is going to be some plain buffer geometry in 3JS. And we can go ahead and just copy and paste this from the finished project to save time. And the rotation on this is the X rotation is negative pi divided by two. That is the rotation in radians, and it represents 90 degrees. So this is a plane that's rotated on its side facing us. And then the position is a Y value of negative three, and that's going to drop the plane down below our line of sight a little. Let's throw the light in there so that we can see something. And we'll also add our terrain in. And now we can see just a nice flat white plane. And that's great. That's essentially the starting point we need to start applying our textures. One more thing before we do that though, there is an args prop on the plane and the 64 and 64, that's the size. So if you change those to very low numbers like this, you're going to get a really small square. And we'll go back up. The third and the fourth argument in the args array are the subdivisions on the X and the Y axes for the plane geometry. So that determines how many vertices there are in here and how many faces the plane is broken up into. This comes into play once we apply the displacement map and I'll show you that. Um, we won't be able to see any difference if we change it right now though. So let's wait until we add the displacement map. So in order to get our textures into the code sandbox. We need to go and grab them from our files here and we can just drag and drop them into the public directory in the code sandbox. That's going to upload them and now they're accessible to the sandbox at the root of the project. So let's remove use frame and use ref. We don't actually need those from the imports and add an import for use loader from React 3 Fiber. Use loader is a hook that can load either geometry or textures. And we can use that in our terrain component by first creating a new variable called elevation. 
calling the use loader hook and the use loader hook takes a string representing the path to the resource you want to load. So we can just do elevation.jpg and let's double check that. Oh, one more thing. There is a first argument before you put in the path and that's the type of loader from three that you want. So let's, let's go ahead and add that real quick too. You can just import all of three by using this import star as three syntax. And then you should have access to all of the loaders. So in this case, we're doing a texture loader. There's other loaders for using geometry and stuff, but we just need a texture loader. And you'll get this warning or error message that terrain suspended while rendering, but no fallback UI was specified. That's because use loader uses the suspense API in React and it returns a promise until the loading resolves which just means that you need to handle the loading case. And you do that by adding a suspense component that wraps anything that's doing loading. So you can just add that in the canvas here by wrapping train and suspense. And then suspense needs a prop, which I think is called fallback. And we can just render null until it's done loading. You also need to import suspense from React. And once you've done all that, everything should be working again. But nothing's really happening yet because we haven't connected this elevation texture to the plane geometry or more specifically its material. And to do that is really simple. You just add a prop to the mesh standard material that's attached to the plane. And you do that with this prop here, um, displacement map. And then the value should be the texture. If you look really closely, you can actually see the fact that it's displacing. It's very, very subtle right now because we haven't added the normal map yet. The normal map is actually going to allow the plane to cache the right shadows and have the right shading. Um, also, this light is kind of just washing things out a little bit. I think if I were to turn it down, you start to see a little bit more or maybe even change this to a directional light for a minute. Oh, that's even worse. Um, yeah, so we'll go back to the point of light, but the important thing is that we needed to have that normals map to finish this process of, of making this look good. So let's just add it and get that out of the way. So there's another prop called normal map. And we're going to attach the normals texture from our normals.png. And refresh. And now we're starting to see something real here. So this is this is good progress. Um, in order to see that this actually looks 3D, let's go ahead and add the 
orbit controls right now too. So you can actually get orbit controls from the Dre library. And this is probably the easiest way these days to add orbit controls because you just import the component and then add it in the canvas and now bam, orbit controls, easy. <laughs> It's really cool. It, you used to have to go through a little bit of a process to add orbit controls and attach it to the camera. And there's a couple steps. It's not that hard, but now the Dre library just does it for you and it's great. So now we have some geometry and it is looking pretty 3D here. Before we move on to add the colors, I'll show you how these displacement arguments affect the displacement map. Right now we have it set to 1024 by 1024, which means if you were to visualize it, that there's 10 hundred, there's 1024 divisions going across this plane that create new faces and vertices. If you add the prop, um, for wireframe to the mesh, you should actually be able to see that. Yeah, so if I zoom in really close here, there's 1024 faces in both the X and the Y direction that are making up this plane now. If I change this to a very low number like eight, suddenly the plane is very simple and you'll notice that our deformations actually kind of went away. There's no more 3D height to any of these islands. They're just, you can actually still see shading and that's coming from the normal map, but the displacement map is not really doing anything. And that's because there's only Eight, an eight by eight grid of vertices spread across this entire cube. There's not enough of them for the deformation to happen. So we can ramp that number back up. Let's jump up to 32 by 32, see if anything happens. Still nothing really happening, maybe a little tiny bit. Yeah, so you can see there's a little deformation happening now because some of these points happen to lie on the islands, but the resolution is extremely low. If we jump up even higher to say 256 by 256, now we kind of have our islands back, but they're still pretty blocky and craggy and depending on your performance constraints, that might be okay. Or if this was really, really far away, this low number might be fine, but we can just keep ramping up and maybe even jump to a really high number. Until our performance starts to get hit. So this is 2048 by 2048. And if I refresh, you'll actually see that the scene takes a significant amount of time to load up. And that's because 2048 by 2048 is a little bit taxing. Um, I found earlier that this sweet spot for this particular displacement map is around 1024. It loads in a pretty fast amount of time and it looks fine. So let's just leave it at that. But that's the important thing. That's what these two arguments do. And that's why they're important when you have a displacement map applied to otherwise flat geometry. Uh, great, so we're making good progress. This doesn't look anything like the finished scene does with all the colors. So we need to make one more texture and that is a color texture. The really cool thing about terrain is that color is kind of like a function of the elevation. 
um, it's just the way that, you know, plants and biomes tend to work is that trees live at a certain elevation and then there's a tree line where the mountains turn rocky or maybe there's wildflowers and there might be a point where there's snow caps on the mountains maybe like right at sea level just above sea level there's beaches essentially you can take this black and white gradient and turn it into a color gradient that looks pretty close to the real world um, there's exceptions to that like rivers and lakes can exist above sea level right but you could either paint those in manually or just ignore them because like if you're far away from the geometry it's not going to matter but let's go ahead and create a color scheme and we can use photoshop to do that or there's most likely other ways you can do this um, i'm not super familiar with other free image editing tools uh, you could write like a python script or something to do this too and maybe i'll do that just to provide to people later but if you have photoshop or an equivalent to photoshop there's usually this tool called a gradient map and a gradient map maps any arbitrary gradient to the black and white values or the lightness values of the image so we can use that and before you run it though make sure that your image file is in rgb color mode because if it's in grayscale still this color map won't do anything but as long as it's in rgb color it'll work so once you've checked the mode of the image make sure that it has uh, these channels for red green and blue here you can go into adjustments go to oops go to gradient map and then double click on this gradient to edit it so right now it's just mapping black and white to black and white so it looks basically the same all we need to do to start changing that though is change the first value to blue here and now suddenly all the blacks are blue and all the whites are white and that is the basis of what we're going to do so next let's say right above the ocean is some beaches so you can come up with like a cool sand color and then at elevations just above beaches, maybe there's some forest. And let's say it's kind of like lighter, grassy forest. But then maybe to get some more depth to the color, like even farther inland, there's some dark, deep forest. And then above the forest, some mountains start rising so we can get some darker colors here and since this is a volcanic island chain maybe they're kind of like a dark brownish red color and this probably doesn't look much like the real Hawaii but you could you could go look at some aerial photography of Hawaii and make this texture look exactly like that you could even convert some aerial photos into your texture instead of doing it this simple mapping way um, but you might not care if it's exactly like the real world and you're just using some elevation data to make your own imaginary geometry so in that case this is great we'll take this and I just noticed that we have a lighter shade of blue here, which tells me that we didn't actually fill in this space with completely black last time, which is fine. It doesn't make a huge difference, but that's actually why you can see this little bump over at the end here. We'll just leave it 
it doesn't really matter. If you wanted to fix that, you'd have to go back into the elevation and make sure that this whole space was completely 100% black. Uh, we will fix it in the color map though, just to make things easier on ourselves. So let's grab this blue, fill it in. And then just like before, we'll export this as a JPEG to our Hawaii textures folder. And we'll call this folder colors or file colors. And then back in our project, now we just need to repeat the same process as earlier where we applied the displacement map and the normal map. Um, so first upload the colors to the sandbox. Just copy and paste one of the loaders, assign it to a constant called colors colors, JPEG, and then we just apply it to a prop called map. And give it the colors value. Probably need to reload. Whenever you add a hook, you have to reload in code sandbox. And there you have it. There's uh, some geometry. It's a little bumpy and weird. Um, that's just a matter of the resolution of our textures. We just did it by screenshotting. And if you wanted it to look really, really perfect, you'd have to play with that a little bit and get your images a little higher resolution. But this looks pretty good from far away and it's kind of a neat little effect. It looks like there's little boulders and stuff, which there probably is actually, because this is coming from the real elevation data. Kind of looks like waves hitting the shore, which is why we made the light colors on the edges here. And uh, this is really done as far as texturing is concerned. The only final thing we could do to make it look a little cooler like this scene here and more realistic is to add a sky and some atmospheric fog which just means that the scene will wash out into the distance and look a little more realistic like the real world would do so luckily dre also provides a sky component which is awesome so we can import that and then just add it to the canvas. Oops, sky. And then by default, the sun is at kind of 12 noon, which doesn't look right given the way that our shadows look right. So we just need to put the sky sun position and there's a prop for that called sun position at the same location as the point light and then now the shadows are on the back side of the island pointing sort of the right direction and then the final step is to add some fog and fog is part of 3js so you don't have to import it from anywhere it'll just be available inside of any React 3 Fiber canvas. And Fog has three arguments, and those are the color, something called the near distance, and the far distance. The near distance is the nearest point where geometry will affect objects. So if an object is in front of the nearest point, it will not be affected at all by the fog. Also, if it's beyond the far point, it won't be affected. This is something you just need to tweak to make it look good. Um, 
sometimes this is cool. Like, let's say you had a scene where you were inside a house and then there was fog outside. You could see through a window or something. You would want to set the near value to be outside the house so that nothing inside the house looked like it had atmospheric fog applied because that would just be weird looking. Um, anyways, let's hook that up to our new scene. We'll make the fog white, which is pretty normal. You could make this look more like sunset or something. If you use different colors, maybe we'll play with that in a minute. <clears throat> and then we'll set these values to the same thing as our other scene. Oh, and in the version of React 3 Fiber I'm using, you need to do this too. You have to add an attach to the fog. I think in the new version of React 3 Fiber, you don't have to do that anymore, at least for the materials and geometry. I'm not sure about fog. So once we've added that, we're basically at the same point as our finish scene. Notice how different it looks just because of our different colors. Since we created a new color map, things kind of have a little bit of a different tone to them. Usually if you were working on a real scene, you might go in here and kind of mess with this and change things up a little bit. You could add a, like a little river. That doesn't look very good, but you get my point. Like maybe you could find some cool uh, rivers and clone them onto here, or you could do all kinds of cool things and make this look even better. One final thing we could look at before we end this is just try some different values for the fog. So what happens if we set the near value to white? Essentially, the fog kind of obscures everything once you get to two units away. In fact, I kind of misspoke earlier. I said that the fog would not affect things beyond that point, but that's not really a good way to describe it, really. It's kind of like the end point of the gradient for the fog. So you can imagine the fog begins getting applied at zero units away, and then it's completely 100% applied by two units away. Whereas when it was 26, it starts to get applied at zero, but it's not completely washing things out until you get to 26 units away. If I were to make this farther, you should be able to see more. This is one of the things people use fog for a lot is to obscure geometry that ends at a certain point so you don't have to have a huge draw distance in a game especially older games like that was a common trick to use like if i set this to a point before you get to the edge of the of the plane here it hides the fact that there's corners and it just looks like you're looking out into the distance oops yeah so we learned about a couple interesting things, I think. We learned how to create some displacement and normal maps from elevation data, how to attach them to a plane stand, uh, mesh standard material that's on a plane, and then deform that plane. We learned about how the subdivisions in the plane matter when you're using a displacement map, and we also looked at getting orbit controls and sky from Dre and attaching some fog. So I hope this has been helpful. This is a very useful skill to have. You could make almost any type of terrain geometry you could imagine and then start making more interesting things on top of that. Like we could have added a flock of birds into here or done a cool flyby or something with animation. This is just the basis to all types of really interesting 3D projects you could do. So I hope you have fun with this. Go and play with it. Try some experiments and have a great day. Bye.